This show is about basketball in Malaysia. Okay, so Coach Ghazi asks, why is there no athletic scholarship in Malaysia? One. And then uh, the continuation to the, the question is, and is it that playing professional basketball is much more important than finishing education, especially for higher level basketball? Um, I, uh, you can, uh, I put it this way, in Malaysia, mm -hmm. you see the, the, the whole uh, system or the whole basketball is entirely different from uh, countries like what we say, uh, just instance like Taiwan, uh, Philippines, or maybe Korea. So they, the, the, the system is there. So is that once, if you are a basketballer, you want to be professional, so you are able to get a scholarship, all those things. So they offer you that uh, at, the mean, at the same time, they want you to play for the a school or they want you to be with their team. This is how uh, we players are able to get all these benefits. But in Malaysia, do you think we have that platform? That is one reason we don't have that platform. And off and on, uh, I call it a 100 meter run. You understand what I say, hundred meter. It, oh, so sure. it means that it uh, means that a lot of uh, bosses, a lot of sponsor, they come in for the short term. They won't, they won't go for the long term. That means they suddenly pop in. They want a strong team. They want to participate in one tournament. They are willing to spend a certain amount of money. So after that, it just stops. So. So what do you expect from all as a, a professional player or as a player? And some of the even uh, what you say university also the same thing. So the maybe the HM or the the a principal the one the person in charge of the U when that person in charge is keen for basketball. So he will just offer he wants to. And you take that maybe as a marketing plan or marketing strategy. Mm -hmm. So he just recruit some of the top players there mm -hmm. just to market the school or those. Things. But suddenly maybe uh, the school finds up, okay, they change the principal or they change the person in charge. The next person might not be that keen. Mm -hmm. He might have other ideas, everything. Mm. So he might just cut off, or what they say, the different budget, different uh, things. So it won't be long. It's not like what you say. Like a few I look at a few countries like Taiwan, uh, Korea, Korea, Japan, Japan uh, Philippines, Philippines. They, yeah, they have, have a, a long term plan, and maybe the, another word is that they have uh, quite strong support from the government side also. yeah i mean i mean like philippines they change government quite often too but they never change the basketball culture that's, that's yeah there go. because it's that's uh, why you say that i think uh it's almost the number one sports in philippines and another thing is actually uh they can really make a lot of uh famous and make a lot of money from basketball that is different but in Malaysia, it feels that mm -hmm. one of the reasons is very simple because uh, we couldn't get good results in international tournament, especially Asian Games, uh, Sea Games. If we manage to get a, uh, be able to win gold medal at Sea Games or Asian Games, then there will be a different, a different story. Yeah, yeah, true. Yeah, okay. I have uh, the second question is. Uh, what is your philosophy on coaching? So, and how do you handle national tryouts? Uh, what's lacking in the players uh, when they come to tryouts? And what do you look out for? And this question comes from Muzaffa. <laughs> uh, normally, when I call a tryout, I will just uh, uh, maybe study uh, 
the background or the uh, the performance, the past performance. So for to me, I do I look at it this way. I look at the position. Okay, so that one I am looking at. It. The main point I am uh, I I would like my player to be very physical. It cannot be soft. So the the this is the uh, first thing. Uh, what we say that my first uh, aim. I look at you. Uh, I I would like all my players to be able to play physical game. Okay, the next part is coming in. Next one, one on one. You are you are, you are skillful enough. The next one, you are able to shoot. Because I I want all my players to be able to uh, do everything, not just okay. You can shoot only, but you cannot penetrate. You cannot uh, do uh, good defense. I won't I won't pick you because I I doesn't need a player just uh, good in one uh, segment and not good in another. I want. Uh, players which is all rounder, so that and if any player have uh, followed me before, I would like my players to have uh, play in all five positions. That's why I I did mention before. I don't want players to just be restricted. Oh, you are the point guard, you play point guard. Or you are the more, the big man, you just play big man. No. You should be able to play from the one to five, so that in that case, it solved me a lot of problem, especially during training. Because sometimes injury comes in la, absence la, maybe all these things. When if I don't have players able to play from one to five, it really jeopardizes my training. Because sometimes when I need scrimmage, I need to run something. It won't work. You have, we have to wait for that guy to be around, all these things. No. I would drill, I would train my players all. They are able to play from one to five. And off and on during uh, training or so, I might group all the tall players one side, all the short players one side. <laughs> so they go. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. That's the usual drill. Yeah, because uh, yeah, I, yeah, I know. But yeah, it, we, yeah, yeah. That that force that to the, whoever you have to ha learn to be a point guard, especially the four five man. Yeah, yeah. And the short one, you should be learning how to post up the big the man. Up, yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> I mean, I think one, yeah, one of the challenges, especially in Malaysia, that we're not so much of a big size. So you kind of need like everybody to play at least at the same level of skill yeah, level. Yep. Yeah, we don't have seven foot players. True, true, true. That's why now currently I'm uh, running uh, that uh, read and react offense. Mm -hmm. Because it's actually positionless. Positionless, or modern basketball. Small, small, small ball. So that, yeah, you got a small ball. Yeah. Yeah. So, and the other part is uh, I pick up this, uh, uh, what you say, the tips actually from Ted Bobbing. Uh, Coach uh, Ted Bobbing is uh, with the Philippines, Ateneo, or the Gilas or so. Yeah. So, he is the one that uh, taught me when he was in New Zealand. He came over, uh, assigned for the Red, uh, what do you say, Red Eagle. Set up Red Eagles team okay. during the Malaysian Basketball League. So he was assigned, I was his assistant coach. So that he brought me, that time he was running uh, the famous triangle offense. Oh, okay. So that's how I learned tra triangle offense. Triangle, option, uh, triangle offense is probably one of the most interesting options offense for the 90s basketball. Because of the yeah. because of the off ball uh, off ball ball side and uh, off ball side uh, yep, situation. Yep, yep. Actually, yeah. we were running very well with the wow. triangle offense. Wow! And that triangle offense, and he, Ted Bobbin did mention, actually is positionless. 
even the point guard can go into into that fight. That's right? yeah, spot. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So, so everywhere your... when the ball, yep, the ball goes whichever position, you should know how to execute the move. Yeah. And yeah. from there, you read the defense. Yeah. How the defense react. Yeah. Also, you kind of need a players with a good IQ to actually execute them. Yep. Yep. Yeah. Right. That's why. But actually, to me, I look at it is not the what is the system that really matters. Because IQ, when you keep on running the systems, then you just have to point out to their players. Uh, you have to anticipate or you have to make adjustment with the defense. The defense will just maybe they know what you are running. So once they try to sag in or once they try to cheat over, <laughs> where you need to run. Yeah, yeah, that, yeah. That, yeah. Is, that is quite auto already. Yeah, it's yeah, IQ yeah. or yeah. it's actually a lot of training. Yeah, yeah, a lot more training situations. Yeah, yeah. That's, yeah. that's, that's, that's the that's the point. Yeah, yeah. And that's why back to the national team, well, that's now he was asking. Yeah. So that is how I'm uh, just telling him. So this is how what I do selecting the national team. All right. Yeah. Okay. Um, okay. Okay. And um, now we move on to my question. Um, <laughs> <laughs> uh, this is like the last three questions that I have. Um, your resignation from the Sea Games 2017 was a huge was a huge news, especially uh, after our our performance in Sea Games that 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 particular year. Um, would you care to share with us the entire process of from 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 the recruitment for players to the traveling for the friendlies and coming back to the sea game would you care uh, would you care to share us um, bits of stories of how that experience actually went uh, yes uh, regarding the 2017 uh, thing still just uh, quite fresh in my mind. I should be thankful to Tato Loa to just get me, uh, giving me another chance to handle the national men's team. And I, I, what I can say that I feel that in Malaysia and I hope to win, not to aiming for gold, I hope to make it into the final. That is my aim. So coming back from the, the players that I selected. So actually it's a, a combination of young and uh, some senior one. Like Li Wei, Su Eng Heng, maybe you say you get uh, Wong Jin Yong, uh, Lo Shi uh, Pai, and those are the senior one. So the young one is Mei Mei. I got it. Uh, Ten Yen, Yi Hao. Who was, else? Uh, uh, Kok Hao. Kok Hao, yeah. The young point guard. The young point guard, Kok so, Hao, yeah. Yep. Then I got Ma Chi Kuan. Oh, Ma Chi Kuan, yeah. Yeah, the sub shooter. Yeah. So you see, uh, uh, these are actually, it's not easy to just select the players. Yeah. So what is in my mind is that uh, uh, Sea Games is one tournament, is one game that matters. So you doesn't need uh, to have like what a uh, league. You have to play maybe uh, uh, ten to fifteen games, everything. So everybody knows what their system is about. Sea Games is actually uh, one tournament that. During that game, if you really come up with the uh, right strategy, you just win. So it really is. So this is what in my mind. So when I get, I assemble this team, I will make a combination of uh, experience and uh, young and quick one. So my point is uh, just very simple. When I, whoever I face, especially uh, teams. I might surprise the other team 
I got I I throw in a young team, just go pressure full court press everything. Then suddenly I get a, 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 a another group of players that I need experience. I need to slow down the pace. I need to uh, just make uh, but able to contain them, just slow them. So these are the things that all in my mind that is part of my strategy. So that's why I have to, what you say, uh, look around, consider which player do I select. So I, I just a simple example is that I need uh, Yi Hao, I need Ma Chi Kwan for what? They are small, but I know they are deadly. So I might just throw them in. I need you, I need them to go in, just hit two or three, three points. Then you are out. I need that only. This is actually, as a coach, we should have, uh, what you say, prepare for this. We need this type of players. Mm -hmm. Then I need those like uh, players that are so confident when you, the uh, opposite there pressure you. Like I need Su Eng Heng. I need uh, Kok Hao. When they are under pressure, they can handle that. So this, uh, then like the big man, I still need uh, leeway. So it helps me. Then the newcomers like Perry Lim was mm -hmm. making in there. Yeah. Then I, uh, uh, Wong Jin Yong. Mm -hmm. So these are the one that I, I need to just get the ball in for them. Just attack, go one on one, maybe draw a foul and one, all these things. That it's is what aggressive, I yeah. Yeah. So uh, these are the, like what you say, like big men, I need like leeway. I need them to slow down the game. I need them to control under pressure. He's the one that wouldn't just simply throw the ball away. So that is why you say uh, as a national coach or as a coach, you have to uh, be very sure what the type of player you are selecting. All these things come in. So definitely, I can say uh, maybe some of the player will be disappointed, uh, couldn't make into the uh, final draft. But anyhow, it's sometimes it's. Uh, is uh, what you say hard? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. It is. It's very difficult. Yes. Every very every difficult. every coaches will face that problem. So yeah. you have to decide. You have to make the uh, so normally uh, like players that you won't you you got. I mean, maybe thirty chances of making. I would just tell them. I will call them. Sit down. Talk to them. You might not be able to make into the final job. If you choose to stay around, uh, maybe help the team and maybe help himself uh, able to encounter uh, this type of level or high basketball. level. Of yeah, high level basketball. basketball. So it helps the team. So at least they feel okay la, because I, I, I might not, he is not, he is prepared, he won't make it into the team. So it won't hurt that much. So for those, uh, in the borderline, like 13, 12, 13 attempts, sometimes it's hard. <laughs> so the final decision I have to make, especially like two way home. Yeah, because I know he is actually in the borderline. Mm -hmm. yeah. So that, that is the situation. And he got the height there. I told him many times. Yeah. And almost, uh, I can say, uh, Ivan Yu also almost in the borderline. So he is actually the ball, but at the final phase that then Ivan did perform already. That's why I got him into the team. Yeah, Ivan already retired at such a young age. Yeah, yeah because of the ACL. Yeah, 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 ACL is really tough, especially when you're a big man. Yeah. So there's uh, some tips about uh, two zero one seven. Then regarding the draw, it's actually one factor or so. The draw was, I was expecting that uh, we are the host and during the draw that time, even though they go in the S system, 
uh, sitting. Mm. So it was it supposed to be uh, Philippine. Yeah, uh, gold medal. The previous was uh, Indonesia. So down actually is Singapore and Thailand. So as then we were in fifth or what? Actually, it, it goes by the S. Definitely, we will be in the A group with Philippines, uh, Thailand, and Malaysia in the same group. But I going to what normally a host team. You got the option. You can just come out. Then you pick. You pick which group you can go. So you got the choice. You got the. I mean, as a host, you normally have. But uh, unfortunately, it didn't turn out. It goes according to the sitting comes in the S system. But doesn't matter. So after all, they already draw, already decided the grouping already. Yeah. But when I look at it, it's actually one good. Uh, what do you say? Uh, good uh, draw also. Why? Because uh, we can say, if I place in the same group with Philippines, Thailand, and Malaysia, I look at it, Philippines maybe it might be strong. Right? Everybody knows that you will emerge uh, top in the group. Now that is only this is, uh, deciding one is we play Thailand. If we manage to beat Thailand, we make into the semi final. Then when we cross over, when we crossed in the semi-final, then we had a, a hell good chance of making it in the final. Because either the other side definitely will be, uh, as we look at it, it will be uh, Indonesia, Singapore. Yeah, because the final... a slim chance of uh, Vietnam. Yeah, because the final was slightly a bit, I think final was Indonesia and Philippines that year. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, and it was probably um the 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 in the, the Philippines Thailand probably the best highlight of the entire tournament game because you got to see two giants who were playing like Tyler Lamb <laughs> showed up I think that was crazy uh, yeah. he is literally almost unstoppable he can do it on the defensive end he can do it on the offensive end you're just wondering how to stop that kind of guy yeah that was a very interesting year yeah. So they, they, they come back to the sea games. That's why I, I just, it's, it doesn't matter. But only thing is, uh, our uh, aim is to just have to beat Thailand. So if you were to make into the semi final, I think we stand a very good chance for the silver. We make into the final. I'm very sure because I, like I in the beginning I told you already, sea game is just one game. That's all. That game, if you you perform well, you put in the right strategy, you just get the game. So I think this is uh, what we say, uh, carnival tournament, top tournament. Is is actually you can you can't just uh, tell anything will happen. It's um, on that. Yeah, on continuation of to the to the question, uh, what do you think of the talent mm -hmm. pool in Malaysia is like today? Pardon? What do you think? Of the what do you think of the talent pool that we have in Malaysia today? Um, I mean, I don't want to compare to other countries. I just want to compare. I mean, I just want to ask you from our past talent. Experience. Yeah, talent. Our talent pool. The talent we had talent actually, but uh, the bad thing is that uh, I think the problem starts off with uh, our grassroots. Uh, I noticed that only recently, only I I do encourage of uh, I, I do encourage a lot of uh, what do you say the way we play basketball. We shouldn't be what you say. Uh, sometimes I look at it. Why are we so uh, what do you say so sissy? Uh? Just a slight foul only. You have what you you want to be a lefty. You want to call that foul. And sometimes our official uh, referees, they just go so they, they just, you should you should be fair to both sides. You don't simply call foul. Let them just start to, I mean, start to just uh, get used to all this type of uh, hand jack or hand pull, all these things. It's normal. 
Yeah. It's a normal. Just yeah. be fair to both sides. I think yeah. that's how the build up to be a uh, uh, physical game, all these things. And in the, in the end of the day, when we start to play teams like uh, all these international tournaments, we are able to play. Man. Yeah. I, I believe that that is what. And from the way we, I just move around sometimes like uh, Kampong Kampong or maybe the new village in Chinese area. I go there and the court there, I see the young man or some of the senior or veteran playing. They just go up, the guy touch his hand and he call the foul. And when he done, a, a do a shot, the people block his shot, he say foul. He say touch the finger. I say, oh, come on, man. Oh, you are killing the game, la. <laughs> You was a girl, la. You are yeah. killing the game, man. Yeah, 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 yeah. I remember those days. I used to I, play. I, I, used to I, play I would have, If yeah. I know them, I would just tell them, la, Come on, uh -huh. man. Yeah. It's yes. So I think. It's, yeah. Uh, but talent wise, I think we had talent. Only thing is, uh, what I I say. Uh, Malaysia is that uh, why I come back the whole thing is that I re we really need government support if we don't have the government support we rely on private sector it's not going anywhere I, I still believe that you need all those uh, top people all those real big corporates comes in then then we are able to go far if we still rely too much on, I mean, the private sectors, all these things, it's not that easy. Yeah. So, yeah, all, everything comes back like uh, what you uh, find at most of the country. Even you see, you look at Korea, the Samsung, all those are the top corporates. Yeah? They are the ones that are behind the thing. Mm -hmm. And you go to Thailand also, you see the SPL. Those are the sponsored by the uh, big corporates. But Malaysia, we are lack of that. I think you know, it starts off in Indonesia, also they had some big, big uh, corporates uh, behind those uh, pro team. You know. no, one last question, one quick question. Okay. This is actually from Miss Lan. Huh? Miss Lan. Lan. So he asked okay. me this. Does Coach Go still play basketball? And if he does, where is his favorite spot? You mean I'm still playing basketball? Yes. Yeah. But uh, I still, uh, in KL, I play in Puchong. That is uh, the Hanmin, but Batu Amba Plus, Puchong. All right. Okay. okay. All right, Miss Lan, yeah. you got your answer. I had an another veteran group in Nepo, so, so off and on I have been playing. Now. But sometimes age is catching up, the leg doesn't listen that well, <laughs> in, <laughs> the aching around. Okay, nice talk, nice to having a chat with you. Thank you very much, Coach Ko. I really appreciate this moment. I mean, for all the young um, basketball players that have been, you know, following you and watching what you've been doing, things you say has been inspiring. I really appreciate the session. Thank you very much. I will catch up with you soon, definitely. And I, I hope the best for us coming for 2021. Yeah. Yeah, most glad. Um, and I should uh, take this opportunity uh, to thank you uh, for inviting me. And actually, it's an honor. Oh, uh, my! Oh, oh, oh. So, the honor is out. Oh, mm -hmm. It's more mine. So I uh, just final one, Rasif. I hope that uh, all the viewers or anything, I. I don't get me wrong that I need I want publicity all those things. I just want to maybe have fun chatting with you, sharing it's something. What it's it's I been know fun. It is fun. It is fun. It okay? is fun. It is fun. Not for the sake of I want to uh, get more publicity. It, you you should you should you should you okay. should.
nice All right. talking Thank to you. Thank you very much. Good night. Good night. You, Good everybody, night. take care. Okay, you too. follow SOP. Of course. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Good night, coach. Okay. Good All right. Night. Thank Good you. Night, everybody. Okay. Bye. bye.